After the events that happened in our Black Frieza vs. Beerus saga, Goku and Vegeta have made a very interesting wish. They've wished for all Saiyans to have their tails back again. This ultimately leads them to parting ways for the time being as Goku goes to say hello to Broly while Vegeta asks Whis to take him to Universe 6. While Beerus is asleep, they plan to go back to their Saiyan roots in an effort to transcend further than ever before. Of course, you'll need to watch the first part of this saga or maybe even the prequel series to understand the full context, but as for what happens next, let's jump right into it. So when Goku uses instant transmission to go to Broly's planet, his Uzaru transformation has already begun. Goku watches in anticipation as the beast evolves into a rather uncanny golden Uzaru. The shades of green are imminent and the surge of power is impeccable, but Broly can't contain himself. He punches a hole through the planet which leaves them with about only 2 minutes until it fully explodes. For the most part, Goku couldn't do anything against this raging Uzaru. His Super Saiyan Blue form definitely wasn't enough and even when he tries to mix his true Ultra Instinct with Super Saiyan, he ends up falling short. It simply requires way too much concentration to maintain Ultra Instinct together with Super Saiyan, but one thing that doesn't require any concentration at all is hitting that like button down below and subscribing to the channel, so be sure to do that if you guys haven't already and you are enjoying content like this. But this lack of concentration is especially blatant in this case considering how Goku has to watch out for the moon as well. And yet, when the time remaining is less than a minute and Goku's survival instincts have begun to scream, the sheer perplexity of the situation leads him to an obvious yet rough conclusion. If he has already decided to leverage his Saiyan potential, then there's no reason for him to run away from the moon. Exactly. Goku calms down for a moment and witnesses the moon in all of its naked glory and of course, he too would transform into a great ape. Right there, at that very moment, Goku evolves into an Izaru for the first time in over two decades. The entire experience has an odd sense of nostalgia to it. He thought he'd have to use some kind of a gimmick upon himself to not go on a rampage, but he seems surprisingly calm, at least calmer than Broly. Broly doesn't seem pleased though. When he sees another Uzaru, he tries to punch him right in the face, but Goku manages to neatly dodge that attack. The time remaining until the planet's destruction was now only 30 seconds. 29? 28. Goku uses his enhanced spatial awareness to look for a nearby planet where he can just warp together with Broly, but his instincts keep screaming which hinders his concentration. His body's natural inclination is to survive and now that he's the closest to his natural disposition, he's getting held back by his own nature. Damn it, just calm down man. You too, Broly, Goku screams and takes a deep breath finally. With 20 seconds remaining, he's finally calmed down. Goku then goes back to the very basics, task focus. He decides to only focus on making sense of all of this tremendous raw power, and then it finally clicks. The inspiration he had while watching Beerus destroy Frieza, the fascination he had while witnessing Broly's Great Ape transformation. All of it comes together into a singular, condensed state of mind which gives him the indication of a superior transformation. However, as for the time remaining until the complete destruction of the planet, it's already zero seconds. There's a massive flash of light and the planet then blows into smithereens with nothing left whatsoever. Total mass destruction. Whis was observing the battle while enjoying his sweets and chocolates, and it takes a minute for the bits and pieces of the planet to clear away, but then, he notices that neither Goku nor Broly are anywhere to be seen. What exactly happened? In just 20 seconds, Goku managed to condense himself into a more versatile version of the Great Ape. In doing so, he even went further beyond and reached an unprecedented transformation. He then instantly punches Broly senseless until he's knocked out and then uses his instant transmission to go to a certain planet. Consider me surprised because it's King Kai's planet and the first thing he does when he sees them is freak out. Oh hey King Kai, how you doing? Goku says. Not good now that you're here. Yes, why are you here and why did you bring him? King Kai replies. 
Goku pauses for a minute and then states, I don't know. When I had to instant transmission, my body just instinctively decided on your planet. It wasn't until after we were here that I realized what happened. Well, at least you didn't bring any explosives. Hey Bubbles, get this man a mirror, King Kai replies. Goku looks in the mirror and is stunned by his change in appearance. Stark red fur covering his body, his hairstyle has visibly changed and raw strength seems astronomical. Wow, what the heck do you think this is, King Kai? Goku asks. Another weird transformation? But King Kai first demands a brief explanation on what actually happened here. He explains the things with the tails, Broly's transformation, and everything. He then also asks King Kai to maybe heal Broly since he had to deal with the worst of it. King Kai obliges. Goku then starts wondering about the name of his new transformation. Saiyan Red? Super Monkey Saiyan? Maybe Super Saiyan Grade 8. Why not just name it Super Saiyan 4? It's just a Super Saiyan form, right? King Kai states. You know what? That's actually a pretty great idea. Super Saiyan 4 it is, Goku proudly declares. Meanwhile, on planet Sadala, Vegeta orders Kale to go and get him Kaba. She freaks out, but she does as she's told. Kaba is genuinely excited to see Vegeta. It's been a good two years since the day they first met, and now he finally gets to introduce King Sadala to Vegeta. They take off to the king's castle right away. Uh, hey Vegeta, mind if I ask what's up with the tail? I don't recall seeing that at the Tournament of Power, Kaba asks. Yeah, it's new. I'll explain everything when we meet your king, Vegeta states. They would soon enter the capital. Kaba signals to a few nearby Saiyans that a guest is here and so preparations are instantly made. Other Saiyans are gathered outside the castle to welcome him, but Vegeta being Vegeta, he just walks right through them. And there on the throne sits the mighty Saiyan who rules planet Sadala. King Sadala and Prince Vegeta have finally met for the very first time. This is Prince Vegeta, I assume, King Sadala boldly asks. Never mind that, you can just address me as Vegeta. I'm not the prince of your people, Vegeta replies. Very well then, in that case, you are free to address me as Sadala as well, the king replies as he shakes Vegeta's hand. This catches plenty of the royal retainers off guard. Some of them even start fuming, but Vegeta remains unfazed by the tension. I see some of your people are rather cautious of my presence here. So, how about it, king? What do you say to having a duel with a Saiyan from another universe? Vegeta makes a very bold request here. Sure enough, the king of planet Sadala is a proud warrior much like Vegeta himself. He agrees to the battle and an arena is prepared. It does take some time to get everything in order though since Vegeta was especially meticulous about having as many Saiyans as spectators as possible. Kaba, Kalifla, Kale, and tens of thousands of other Saiyans gather in the arena even the young Prince Sadala is attending. Now, I'm already aware of your extraordinary might, Vegeta, but in the name of my pride as the king, I will not let my people down by losing to you, King Sadala declares, and then proceeds to transform into a Super Saiyan. Except it doesn't stop there. The king follows it up with a Super Saiyan 2 evolution, and if that wasn't enough, he takes it even further beyond and transforms into what can be considered the Super Saiyan 3 state, at least on planet Sadala. Seeing this, Vegeta just burst into laughter. Very impressive, King. You managed to come this far in just two years. I'm glad Kaba didn't keep you out of the loop, Vegeta states, but as he said this, he notices a grim vibe overtake the arena. King Sadala then states, Vegeta, it wasn't just training or battles that got me this far. It was the circumstances. These past few months have been somewhat unpleasant. What do you mean, Vegeta asks calmly. We'll talk after this battle. Now, come on. Bring out your best transformation, he demands. Oh, so you want to see my strongest transformation. Suddenly, the entire environment around them begins to crumble as Vegeta almost lets out his ultra ego state. He stops himself, though, because that isn't how he should be going about it. He remembers that just like Kakarot, he needs to go back to his roots as well in order to find the next level. Now in the wake of this realization, how will Vegeta proceed against this battle with King Sadala?
that is going to do it for this one, guys. Thank you all so much for watching this until the end. As always, if you made it this far, our What If Goku and Vegeta Wish Their Tails Back series is actually doing pretty well. And as always, if this video gets, let's say, 2,000 likes this time, part three will be coming right up. And I know that you guys are enjoying this. So we're going to knock that one out of the park. Down below in the comments, let me know what you think King Sadala and the people of Planet Sadala have been dealing with over the past few months and what exactly has them so troubled. Should Vegeta be worried? And what of Goku and Broly? How do you guys think that one is going to turn out now that Goku has officially unlocked Super Saiyan 4? Remember, this is our own original what if, and if you guys would like to see more content like this, definitely consider subscribing to the channel down below. But anyways, have a great, great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.